All right, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through a really helpful and free tool to learn more about fruits and vegetables and kidney disease, and especially to determine if a fruit or vegetable is high or low in potassium. Uh, first things first, to access the tool, you'll need to go to our website. You can just type in kidneyfoodie.com. Uh, then you can either scroll down to the fruit and vegetable tool here, or you can go to our menu under resources and access it right here. And I would definitely bookmark this on your computer and phone. Uh, a lot of places will give you a handout showing you which fruits and vegetables are high and low in potassium. The handouts get lost and maybe you forget to bring it grocery shopping with you. So having a website saved on your phone means that you'll always have the information handy when you need it. Uh, now that we're here, let me give you a little tour so you know how to use this guide. First off, you'll see this little button here. If you click on this, it will reveal instructions on how to use this page. It basically has the same information in it that I'm about to show you here. So if you ever need a refresh on how to use the interactive guide, just click on this button. The first thing I'll show you is the search bar. So if you don't want to be scanning a long list of foods to find the one you're looking for, then just type the name of the food in here. So let's search for an apple. When I type in apple and then hit search, I get three different results, all with the word apple in them, so that's great. For each fruit and vegetable, I have the same information listed. I've got a picture of the food, the serving size, the potassium content, the fiber content, and the calories. And one of the most important things listed here is the serving size. For the majority of fresh fruits and vegetables, the serving size is a half a cup. I also list some other measurements in there if you're trying to be more accurate. For example, with applesauce, I list out a half a cup or four ounces, which are equal amounts. For pineapple, I'm using a half cup measurement, but I also put the gram weight on there. So if you don't have a measuring cup, uh, or if you've sliced the pineapple into rings and they don't fit into a measuring cup well, then you can use a gram scale to more accurately measure out a single serving. If you don't have a potassium restriction, then you generally don't need to be too precise with your measurements. Um, if your kidney disease is more advanced, then you may need to be a little more precise. Uh, sometimes, however, I list out the serving size as a whole piece of fruit, if it's a small piece of fruit, like an apple or a mandarin orange, so keep that in mind. Um, dried fruits are another example of when I use a different serving size. So let's go up to the top and search for dried. For dried fruits, the serving size is one ounce or 28 grams. The reason for the smaller serving size with dried fruits is because they are more condensed. So to get one ounce of dried fruit, you probably used a lot more than half a cup of fresh fruit. So keep that in mind when determining serving sizes. And then lastly, leafy greens are another food that has a different serving size. So let's do a search for spinach. For fresh, uncooked leafy greens like spinach, the serving size is one whole cup. And I also list the gram measurement, so you can use a food scale to measure those things out if you don't want to use a measuring cup. Um, notice that the half cup of cooked spinach is much higher in potassium and fiber than the raw spinach. And this is because spinach shrinks down a lot in the cooking process. It takes almost four cups of raw spinach to make one cup or one half cup of cooked spinach. Um, but this is important to understand because if you are on a potassium restriction, then knowing the serving size and potassium content of cooked versus uncooked is important. However, and I'll repeat this a lot within this tool, you may not need to be on a potassium restriction. There are a lot of reasons that your potassium levels can be high that have nothing to do with how much of a fruit and vegetable you're eating. So always check with your doctor or dietitian before cutting back on any fruits or vegetables because of the potassium. Regardless of whether or not you're on a potassium restriction, you may still be wondering if food is high or low in potassium, and I don't actually say it outright on this guide. Um, and I do that intentionally. On most of these handouts or lists that get published, they use a cutoff of 200 milligrams of potassium per serving as their cutoff. So if you wanted to replicate some of those lists, you can just change the potassium filter here to either show you foods with less than 200 milligrams of potassium, which would be your low potassium fruits and, fruits and vegetables, or you could change it to this to show you your high potassium fruits or vegetables. But I wanna show you an example of why I don't always like to do it that way. I'm just gonna reset this guide by clicking the reset button here, and then I'm gonna to go to filter by fruits and then narrow my potassium range to show only those foods with 195 to 205 milligrams of potassium. Uh, and I get an apple and a pomegranate here. Now, one apple has 195 milligrams of potassium while a half a cup of pomegranate has 205 milligrams. Now, if I'm using 200 milligrams to decide whether or not to eat something, I would say that a pomegranate is too high. Um, but is it? Is five milligrams gonna make that big of a difference? 
probably not in the grand scheme of things. So if you do have to watch your potassium intake, I would encourage you to use the potassium range up here and play around with it. Maybe looking at fruits and vegetables less than 250 would give you a little more options without being overly restrictive or even 300. Or you could just sort the fruits and vegetables from low to high and browse that way. Another thing you might consider doing is sorting by fiber content. So if you've taken any of my courses, you know that higher fiber intake helps prevent constipation and preventing constipation can really help keep your potassium levels in check. So if you sort by highest fiber foods, then you can choose to incorporate more of these higher fiber fruits and vegetables into your diet, even if they have a bit more potassium. Uh, and again, if you're gonna play with these filters a lot and wanna go back, just hit the reset button to see all of the fruits and vegetables again. Another thing I want to point out on this guide is the different food types. So you can choose between fruits, non-starchy vegetables, or starchy vegetables. Uh, if you click on one of these categories, such as fruit, then all you will see listed below are fruits. Um, this is helpful if you're just wanting to browse around. And also, diabetes is a major cause of kidney disease. So if you're trying to manage your diabetes, you'll probably want to focus a lot on non-starchy vegetables. So you can filter down to that as well. The last feature I wanna point out is that you can actually click on these different fruits or vegetables to see more information about them. So for avocados, you can see that we have a video as well as more information about whether avocados are good for your kidneys, whether they're high in oxalates or not, more information about potassium as well as phosphorus. Um, you might also see some offers here to download a free guide. So you'll not only get this great download, but you'll also be added to our email list where I send out weekly nutrition tips for kidney disease or let you know when we've added new free content to our website. Um, and sometimes I even send out special offers on our courses. Um, I'm biased, of course, but I think my newsletter is pretty darn helpful. So um, definitely consider signing up for that. Uh, moving on though, we talk about some of the health benefits of avocado and even give you some suggestions on healthy ways to eat avocados. And we link to relevant recipes that we have um, if we use that ingredient. And then to return to the main tool, you can either click on this button at the bottom or at the top of each page. Let me scroll up. You can click here as well, and it will take you right back to the tool. Um, so that's the tool. If you play around with this and you don't see the food that you're looking for, just go to our contact page and shoot us a message. We are more than happy to add in more fruits and vegetables on this list, or you can even comment below on this video. Um, we're constantly updating this tool and trying to make it as useful as possible, so feel free to send us suggestions. Um, if you know anyone who might benefit from this information, feel free to share this video. I would love it if you would like this video and comment on your favorite feature of the tool. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel.